Hello, and welcome to episode 31 of Sir Astro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Loku Kanaloa from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Loku is quite a straightforward but fun miniature to paint. He only has three main areas of colour, an interesting skin tone, and, if you choose to, a nicely weathered finish. Let's look at the painting stages. After priming Loku in white, we'll paint on the base colours, followed with some shade for all areas of the miniature. We'll then highlight the figure, which for the skin will also include adding some additional shade as well as the characteristic skin markings. Our finishing touches will include painting the eyes and adding some optional mud effects. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin using a roughly equal mix of Mephiston Red and XV88. I'm not too bothered about hitting the other areas at this stage, except for the eyes which we want to avoid if possible. Next I'm going to paint the eyes using some Avaland Sunset, which I'm lightening with a roughly equal measure of white. If we make any mistakes at this stage, it's easy enough to neaten things up with some of the base skin tone. I'll be returning to add some detail to the eyes later on. Next, I'm going to paint the green trousers, backpack and the pouch with some Castellan green. As usual, a second layer will give us a nice even finish. For the overcoat and boots, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Steel Legion Drab and Balor Brown. I'm retouching some of the green areas as I go. Finally, I'm going to give the gun a base coat of lead belcher mixed with Mechanicus Standard Grey. We're now ready to do some shading. I'm going to begin by shading the skin using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Druki Eye Violet. As usual, I like to soak up any excess shade with my brush. I'm now going to shade all of the green areas with some Beale Tan Green, which is one of the more vibrant shades in the Citadel line.
Next, I'm applying some non-oil to the weapon, which can be applied in more than one layer to darken the gun to your liking. Finally, I'm going to thin some Agrax Earthshade with an equal amount of medium and use it for the overcoat and boots. Once dry, I'm going to apply a couple more layers of this to darken some specific areas down further. This means the shadowed underside of the cloak, as well as the creases under the arms. We're now ready for the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the green areas of the miniature. We want to build up to quite a vivid green, but I'm going to start things off with the first broad highlight using Lauren Forest. Here we want to hit all of the upturned surfaces and edges. I'm now going to add increasing quantities of moot green for the upper highlights. Notice that I'm leaving the right leg more shadowed than the left. We can finish the green off with a few very small highlights of pure moot green. Next, I'm going to highlight the overcoat, starting with an equal mix of Talon Sand and Steel Legion Drab.
For these large areas on the back, I'm using a damp brush to quickly feather the edges of the highlights. I'm not concerned about producing a particularly smooth look for the cloak, as I want it to end up with quite a worn and weathered finish. Notice that I'm providing little or no highlighting at all to the underside of the coat. We can also glaze this over any areas of shade that we may wish to lighten. I might glaze in some additional Agrax Earthshade whilst I work, such as here where I want to emphasise the shadow cast by the backpack. I'm now going to mix in some Zamisi Desert in a couple of stages. I'm now working with pure Zamisi Desert. For my final highlights, I'm going to mix a little Uriel Yellow into the Zamisi Desert. Before leaving the coat, I've chosen to introduce some thinned Drukii Violet into the shadows and the feet area. This can be thinned with a little water or some medium. I like the way this subtly complements the yellowish highlights. I'll be returning to add some weathering here later on. Now I'm going to highlight the skin, starting with some scrag brown. I'm keeping this nice and thin for the head area and gently building up the highlights in two or three layers.
I'm now going to lighten this with increasing amounts of Towelite Okra. I'm using pure towelite okra just for the edges of the facial details. I'm now going to thin some fugan orange with an equal amount of medium and use it to glaze most of the skin except for some of the brightest highlights. I'm doing this to enrich the tone, help smooth the transitions and boost the depth in the shadows. I'm applying two or three layers of this, focusing on the areas I want to darken the most, such as at the back of the head and the area surrounding the eyes. I'm going to finish the skin off by using some pure Agrax Earthshade to paint on some of the distinctive skin markings we can see in the character art. We can go over some of these markings a second time to strengthen the definition. We want to aim to vary the size, shape and spacing of the markings to create a more natural look. Once done, we can take some of the lighter skin tone and apply a thin glaze over the top of the brighter areas to help integrate the markings. We can apply this in more than one layer depending on how faint we want the markings to appear. We can also reapply some of the orange shade. Once we're happy with the skin, we can give a few small highlights to the gun. Because I want the gun to have a generally dark and muted look, I'm using some lead pelcher mixed with a little Zamisi Desert. You may notice I often like to mix non-metallic paint into my metallics. This is because I like the way the non-metallic paint mutes the metallic sparkle, and it also allows me to subtly integrate some of the surrounding colour into the reflections of the weapon. We're now ready for some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eye details and I'm going to start by lightening some flash kits yellow with some white. I'm then using this to highlight the upper half of each eye. Thank you. 
I'm now going to paint the pupils using some German grey. Any dark grey or black even would be fine for this. Finally, I'm going to use some ivory to apply a small reflection to each eye, which I want to overlap with the edge of the pupil so that it really stands out. Next, I'm going to apply some fairly heavy mud effects using a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide. We can create some variety by varying the concentration of the paint, the kinds of marks we add, as well as using different levels of Rhinox Hide in our mix. You can see that I'm using quite a dark mix for the shadowed underside of the coat. I'm also adding small bits of mud splatter quite high up the legs. After applying a protective matte spray, I've chosen to apply some gloss varnish to the eyes. And finally, I'm rebasing the miniature as detailed in episode 10. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please note that in the video description you'll find details concerning the brush that I use, as well as links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Patreon pages. My sincere thanks go to the amazing patrons who are so kindly supporting this work. If you would like early access to the videos, as well as my own Citadel to Vallejo paint recommendations and other perks, consider clicking the link to help me keep going by pledging as little as a dollar. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!